Sup, man? Welcome to the Redneck's Guide to Ravana. Now, Ravana is one of the most versatile and one of the most fun gods in the game. He can be built for auto attack damage, ability damage, or tanking. He can solo, he can jungle, he can support, he can do it all if you build him the right way. Now, I build Ravana as an ability damage god, focusing on maximum cooldown reduction and mana with a smidge of physical protection to defend against hunters and other auto attackers that can bully you in the lane. But no matter how you build him, if you play him right, Ravana can be a mean bully as well and can be one of the best gank supports there is. Now let's take a look at Ravana's lore. So... Ravana understands that power does not come without sacrifice. That's what I'm talking about. He's a man who knows that you got to work for it. He's not just going to wait for power to be handed to him. He's going to work for it. And he's, go he's willing to put in the time and the effort and apparently his own head to get ahead. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know. Okay. Well, point is. He was looking for power, so he sacrificed his own head to Shiva so that he could get a boon from her. Now, she didn't pay attention to him at first, like, man, this guy's crazy, just cutting off his own head, man, I don't want none of that mess. But he's like, no, I'm going to prove it to you again. He's going to cut off his head again, and again, he cuts off his head ten times. And finally, by the time he does that, it's like, she was like, okay, man, you need, to, you need to slow your roll there, buddy. I hear you. You think you're all that? Well, let's give you a boom what you want. And Ravana says, I want to be protected against gods and demons. And so she was like, all right, man, you got it. So now he's protected against gods and demons. So he uses this boon to amass a massive army. So he takes over all of the land. Now, here's the thing. Not everybody liked this guy. And he was, he was immune to gods and demons. And if he's immune to gods, what's he doing in Smite? How are the other gods able to hurt him? Well, the answer to that question is because it'd just be totally OP otherwise. Just deal with it. But the point is, another uh, powerful warrior came up to stop him who was a human, an avatar of Vishnu. And his name was Rama. So Rama and Ravana are total enemies and are going to be battling to the death. In the battlegrounds of Smite. Alright, now that we have an idea of his lore, let's take a look at his abilities. So, let's take a look at his passive. So, his passive is successful basic attacks and abilities ag against an enemy add to Ravana's combo chain. Now, what that means is every time you land a basic attack or every time you hit an enemy with any of your abilities, it's going to give you stacks on your, on your passive. Every eight stacks you get, you're going to get a shield worth 5% of your maximum health. And that can stack up to three times. So that means after 24 enemy hits, either with auto attacks or abilities, you're going to get a shield worth 15% of your maximum health. Now, this isn't the best passive, but if you're, in, if you're in the solo lane especially, or if you're jungling, or if you're just sitting in lane just, you know, just punching on people, this is going to give you a pretty decent health boost. I mean, it's 15% of your maximum health. You might as well utilize it. You'd be surprised how much of a difference it can make. So now we have an idea of what his passive does. Let's take a look at his first ability which is Prana Onslaught. So Prana Onslaught, what it's going to do, in a, in a short cone in front of you, it's going to throw out some big damage. Look at this. 80 to 300 plus 80 percent of your physical power. That is some nice damage. That is some good scaling on some Pretty dang decent damage. And look at that cooldown. It's only 8 seconds. Look at that cost. Only 30 to 60. Man, it is cheap. It's got a low cooldown. It does a ton of damage. And it even slows the targets by 25% for 2.5 seconds. This is just a great ability. It's awesome. Low cost, low cooldown, high damage, got to slow. I mean, it's just great. The only problem with it is, it is the range is pretty short. You do have to be very close for it to land. So, you know, you really only use it if you're basically within melee range or really close to melee range. But it's awesome. You're going to use Prana Onslaught pretty much all the time. Just bust it whenever. 
you're trying to clear a lane, you know, you're just trying to do some damage to the jungle camp, trying to uh, harass an enemy guy, trying to beat him down, just use this constantly. It costs basically nothing. You know, I mean, don't just abuse it. Don't use it for no reason. I mean, it will deplete your man eventually, but it's got a low cost, got a low cooldown. You can afford to just kind of just spam this thing practically. So now we have an idea of that. Let's take it to the second ability, which is overhead kick. Now, overhead kick, here is something you need to know. You've got to master this ability. This ability has a long-ish cooldown from 20 down to 12 seconds. And its cost isn't super cheap. But here's what it does. In a line in front of you, you're going to kick out a soccer ball that's going to deal some damage to, uh, to enemies in the line. Now, the damage isn't fantastic. It's 70 to 210 plus 70% of your physical power. So, I mean, it's good, but it's not amazing. So, But you're not going to use it for damage. What it's going to do is for 0.75 seconds, when you activate this ability, you are immune to CCs and damage. Not only are you immune to getting in, any hit, so Ra throws his beam, you know, Thanatos comes in trying to execute you, you can use this just to be like, nope, don't do nothing. Don't do no damage, don't do nothing. It's also a cleanse. It's going, it's going to cleanse you of anything, and it's not a dash. So you can use it even when crippled. You can use it to cleanse all your CCs and prevent CCs from being dealt to you. So think of this. Ares comes up to you, right? He's going to throw his ult on you, and you're going to get chained. You're like, oh, man, I'm chained by Ares. I'm about to get pulled in, man. Right before it pulls you, you're going to overhead kick. That chain will not pull you, and it will deal no damage. That is just amazing. You do not need Sanctuary, and you do not need Purification because of Overhead Kick. It gives you more room for your relics, and it also gives you the, an incredible ability to harass and sustain in the lane. You can be prepared to just kind of go up and just punch somebody in the face and just be like, all right, I'm just going to Overhead Kick and get the hell out of here. You know, it's just awesome. It's such a good ability, but you've got to master it. This ability can make or break Ravana if, you, if used correctly or incorrectly, and it will save your ass over and over again if you know how to use it. So practice this ability a lot. Learn when to learn the timing for it. Learn when to use it. Now, a third ability is Ten Hand Shadow Fist. Now, Ten Hand Shadow Fist is a longish line with a range of 45, and what it's going to be, it's and it's kind of wide. It's going to deal damage 120 to 260 plus 55 percent of your physical power, and it's going to heal you for up to three minions and one god that it passes through. It's going to pass through minions, but it will not pass through gods. When it hits a god, it's going to root him for 1.25 seconds. It's also going to heal you for 15 to 75 for up to three minions and up to one god hit. So you can get up to four ticks of that heal if you land it right. So what you're going to do is you're going to use this in lane to clear a wave to get you some heal back. So this is going to help you sustain. Now the cost isn't super cheap. It's 55 to 75 and the cooldown is pretty long at 18 seconds. So you can't just spam this ability. You got to use it appropriately. Use it sparingly when you got to heal. You need to clear a wave or you really got to root this god but don't just toss it out there for no reason it's also not terribly difficult to aim so you don't have to worry too much about that but you know make sure you land it because that long cooldown means if you miss then you've just basically blown your initiate so practice with it and get good at landing it now his ultimate is pretty cool it's mystic rush so you can think of it kind of like tears ultimate in which you're going to leap out now, the range on that leap isn't quite as long as Tears, but what it's going to do is you're going to leap out, and of course, since it's a leap, you can go over towers, you can go over walls, you can go over people, you can go over whatever, and you can, and you can just leap out and, you know, get into the thick of things. So you can use it both to engage and to escape. Now, if you use it to engage, the enemies that you hit in a radius of 15 around you, uh, the centermost god to you that you hit is going to deal full damage to you, but all other guys are going to deal reduced damage to you for three to five seconds. Now, what that means is if you leap in on somebody 
and you only hit and you leap the centermost god you leap on all other gods are going to deal significantly reduced damage to you so you can use this to engage and really deal hurt on somebody without having to worry too much about the other team bursting in on you now that damage reduction won't just make you invincible. So you can't just go willy-nilly. Like, you can't just jump in and just expect, you know, the entire team not to be able to kill you. They can still totally kill you. But it will give you some really nice mitigation that's going to allow you to stick to that target and really put a heart on them before you got to get the hell out of there. All right. Now that we've taken a look at his abilities, let's take a look at how I build Ravana. All right. So this is how I'm going to build Ravana. You can build him really just a tremendous amount of different ways. You can build him, you can use transcend, you can build transcendence on him. I personally don't. I think there are better options, but you can do an early transcendence build with him. It will work. Um but that's not what I do. I build him to be a little bit more focused on uh, just straight ability damage. I'm going to use my. I'm going to use uh, Breastplate of Valor to get me the mana I need, and I'm also going to go for massive cooldown reduction. Especially so, if you look at it in the early game, we're going to be going for big ability damage. We're going to focus on auto attacks in the later game. Once we're able to really get in there and you know really stick to somebody, then we're going to focus on our auto attacks. But in the early game, we're going to focus on abilities to maximize our wave clear, and maximize our burst. So the first thing we're going to get is Warrior Tabby. Now, shouldn't have to say much at this point. Lots of power, lots of movement speed. You need it. Just get it. The second item we're going to get is one of these two. Jotun's Wrath or Breastplate of Valor. And then after we get one, after we get the one, we're going to get the next one next. So one of these is second, the other of these is third. Now, you go Jotun's Wrath first if you're wanting to do more damage in the lane. If you need to do more damage, you go Jotun's Wrath first. It's going to give you that cooldown, the, the physical penetration, the mana, the power. It's just great. You're going to use that if you're going to want damage early. However, if you need more mana and you need some physical protection early, you're going to go Breastplate of Balor. It's got double the mana, Jotun's Wrath. It gives you a ton of physical protection, and it's still got that 20% cooldown reduction. So Breastplate of Balor is going to give you more sustain. And Jotun's Wrath is going to give you more damage. So choose which one you need in the early game. I usually go Breastplate of Valor in the early game. I usually go that second instead of third. Because in the early game, what you really need, you need to stay in the lane as long as you can to get the gold and to get the experience. Now, but if you're going for a gankier build, like, you know, you're, you're trying to surprise, you might go Jotun's Wrath first. But either way... Get either Jotun's Wrath or Breastplate of Valor second, and then get the other one third. The reason for that is we want that 40% cooldown reduction as early as possible. So that's what we're going to do. Now, the fourth item we're going to get is Frostbound Hammer. Now, Frostbound Hammer is just awesome. It's got some physical power. It's got a lot of health. And it, enemies hit by your basic attacks so are the movement speed reduced by 30% and their attack speed reduced by 15% for 1.25 seconds. That's just great. You run up, you start auto-attacking somebody, they're going to get slowed, their attack speed is going to go down, it's going to allow you to stick to somebody like glue, and it's going to have them be a, do a little less damage to you if they're an auto-attacker. So Frostbolt Hammer is just awesome. It's going to slow them down, it's going to allow you to stick to them, it's going to allow you to maximize your damage potential, and the more auto-attacks you land, the more of your shield stacks you build up. So Frostbolt Hammer is the first item we're going to get to kind of build into our auto-attacks. Now, the second item we're going to get is a Kaival. Now, a Kaival is just a great, great item. Not just for Ravana, but for a lot of different... Any guy that uses auto attacks can make use of a Kaival. A Kaival is 30% attack speed and 10% physical penetration... Or plus 10, excuse me, plus 10 physical penetration. Every successful basic attack you land increases, increases your physical power by 10 and reduces the target's physical power by 10 for 3 seconds. It stacks up to three times. So this is just awesome. You're going up against another physical god. You just landing basic attacks is reducing their damage and increasing yours. That's just awesome. And this item is cheap as hell. 1700 bucks. I mean, that ain't nothing. It's going to give you a lot of attack speed, some penetration, and it's going to uh, give you more power. Now, obviously, 
you can basically consider it. You can see this build has 145 power. You can basically consider that 175 because getting the three stacks is really easy. You punch a minion three times. So you can basically also think of this as giving you 30 more power once you land a few attacks. Now the last item we're going to get is kin size. Now the reason we're going to go kin size is going to give us 15% more attack speed, which is going to get our attack speed to a respectable number. It's going to give us a lot of power at 40 physical power, and on basic attack hits, you deal physical damage equal to 4% of the target's maximum health. This only affects gods. Now. We're going to get Ken size because that's going to allow you to bully tanks. By the time you get to the late game, without Ken size, it's going to be tough to deal damage to really high health, high protection targets. Now, if they don't have any, you can go Executioner instead. If they don't really have a tank, you can go Executioner instead of Ken size. But if they have a tank, you're going to want to go Ken size. It's going to give you more power, and it's going to allow you to really put a hurt on tankier targets because you're just going to deal a percentage of their maximum health. So, the relics we're going to choose. Remember, you don't need Sanctuary. The reason I have it up here is just to show you what it does. So, it makes you invulnerable to damage for two seconds, preventing you from taking action, but you may still move with the 160 second cooldown. Why the hell would I need that? I've got an ability that at its longest... Ooh, I got some fantasy points, apparently. <laughs> it looks like only two. It looks like I picked wrong. But, look, here's the deal. I've got an ability that can give me that gives me sanctuary and purification for 0.75 seconds that even at its longest cooldown I can use every 20 seconds. I will never need this. Now, and the same is true purification. Now, in certain team comps, if they have just got a ridiculous amount of CC, I mean, I maybe there's a circumstance in which you'll need purification, but I really, really doubt it. So and here's the other thing. When you're picking your relics, I highly, highly suggest do not get Sanctuary and do not get Purification when you're learning Nirvana because that will force you to learn how to use his two effectively. Sanctuary and Nirvana are kind of a safety net for a lot of gods. I'm going to tell you, don't run with that safety net when you're learning this god because that will force you to get good at his two. That will force you to learn when to use his two effectively and using that two effectively is key to playing this god successfully in any game mode so don't use those safety nets force yourself to get good now what i like to do is i like to go curse first it's just great it's going to slow the enemies it's going to reduce their healing it's just awesome it's going to have to really leap in there throw out a curse and it's going to really deal some it's going to really you know mess up the enemy team and their team comp so the second item we get is sometimes you might go meditation. It's going to give you a little bit more sustain in the late game. It's going to let you boost your allies, keep your allies in the team fight uh, in the later games. So meditation can be useful. But also teleport. Ravana has the ability to really kind of leap in and leap out of any situation. He is ready for anything at any time. So you could, so a, a teammate can throw down a ward, and you can just teleport to it, and you're just good to go. You don't need any prep time. You can engage from any. You can engage from almost any distance. You can disengage from any distance. I mean, you know, so you can really teleport in wherever, and you are just good to go. So you might go teleport, especially if you've got a teammate. If you've got teammates that are aware of what you're doing and can throw down wards for you to teleport to. All right, now we're taking a look at his items and relics, and of course his consumables are pretty standard healing, multi or mana potion, ward, elixir, power, kind of the standard array. Now we're taking a look at the items, let's take a look at how we're going to level Ravana. So here's what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to get is Prana Onslaught. The reason for that is Prana Onslaught scale, it has the best damage scaling, and it also uh, has the lowest cooldown. So you're going to want to level it first so you can really lay out a hurt when you need to. It's just a great ability, does tons of damage, low cooldown. I mean, we already, already went over that. We're going to level it first so we can really maximize that high damage potential. The second one, you're going, and, and we're going to pick it first, and we're going to level it first. The second one, the, uh, level two, we're going to get 10 Hand Shadow Fist. We're also going to level that second. Now, Ten Hand Shadow Fist is going to be another good deal of damage. It's going to it's going to get some roots, and we're going to get that healing going. So uh, we're going to get that second. The last uh, the last one we're going to pick up is Overhead Kick. We're also going to level it last. Now, here's the thing: that cooldown starts to go down really fast, but 
if you play your cards right, if you use this ability correctly, you're probably not going to need it more than once every 20 seconds, especially not once we get 40% cooldown reduction and then, it, and then it goes down to 12 seconds even at its longest cooldown. You're probably not going to need it more often than that if you use it correctly. However, if you're up against a team that can just throw out tons of bursts all the time, you might take it second in order to get that cooldown lowered as much as you can. But I highly suggest leveling 10 hand shadow fist second so you can get more damage and more healing out of it now we're also going to take our ultimate mystic rush at every opportunity so at 5 9 13 17 and 20 gonna take it at every opportunity it's gonna give us more it's gonna give us you know more damage reduction uh from other gods every level it's gonna increase its duration it's gonna increase its damage and it's gonna lower its cooldown we're just gonna take it at every possible opportunity so Here's what we do. We level Prana Onslaught first, then Ten Hand Shadow Fist, then Overhead Kick, and we take Mystic Rush whenever we can. Now that we're taking a look at Ravana's uh, abilities and how we're going to build him, let's take a look at how he performs in combat. Alright, now let's take a look at what this guy can do in combat. First of all, we're going to get the first two pieces of our Warrior Tabi, pick up a Curse, and we would get healing potions and wards, but you don't really need them in Clash, so we're not going to worry about it. So, I uh, actually tried to do a, a match against easy bots, which is what I normally do, because I'm just basically trying to show you basic abilities, but Ravana's a little bit more complicated than that. So I've bumped up the enemies to um, medium. Now, in medium bots, your bots are dumb as hell. They are completely worthless. So this might not go our way. We are going to land a punch. We're going to throw in a couple of kicks there. Uh, we're going to kick to try and catch up. And we're going to land one last punch. And that's going to get the kill right there. And we are going to go ahead and maneuver our way backwards. Alright. Oh, and he's going to get killed. We're also going to root Hercules in place. We're going to land a couple of punches there. Just to kind of knock him out. And then we are going to run backwards. All right, now what we're going to see, what we're going to do there, we can be a huge benefit to our team, especially in the early game, because we got lots of roots, we can deal some damage, you know, we got a lot going on. We're going to go ahead and pick up, finish off our warrior Tabi, pick up the first two pieces of the Breastplate of Valor, and then we're going to head back in the lane. Now we've got some mana to work with. So, as I was saying though, your AI in, in medium is just so god-awful. That is probably going to go quite poorly. We're going to root her in place. We're going to easily get that kill. And we're going to get that one too. They were not ready for that. See, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and show you how to use his two a little bit more effectively. And that's not the easiest thing to do uh, against, against a regular boss. We are going to root him in place. We're going to land a punch. We're going to get that kill. Or, well, he bow is going to we got Chiron over here and we got an Ares Ares is gonna whiff that he's just gonna get killed we're gonna go ahead and land a punch on him we're gonna deal some damage we're gonna press him we're gonna root him in place we're gonna punch again and he is not gonna be able to get away because he has no escapes and then we are going to run and now we're gonna head back to base we're gonna go ahead and finish off our breastplate of valor and we're going to start building our Jotun's Wrath, or we would if we had money. But we're going to start building that next. Now we've got some cooldown reductions. Now we can really start to lay, lay a hammer on these fools. Alright, so let's see. we got a Herc. We're going to punch him in the face real quick. Uh, looks like we got a Bastet on here. We're going to go ahead and root that Bastet. We're going to land a few punches. We're going to stay in front of her so she can't get away. Staying in front of these enemies so they can't get away. Land some punch. Clear out the way. Okay, we're going to root you in place. We're going to land some punches. Come on, use your ultimate, man. Hey, watch this. There we go. That's how you do that right there. You see how I use that too, so that I could basically prevent him, prevent his ultimate from doing anything to me at all. So that is how you're going to use that. 
watch for stuff like that, like stuff that's very, very easy to time, like Ares is ult, and you're going to use your two to get the hell out of that stuff. So that is an example of how to use your two to get out of those obvious CCs. And now that is going to be critical to learning how to play Ravana, is learning how to get out of those CCs like that. And that was a good example. So we've got several dudes here. We're going to go ahead and land a punch. We're going to go backwards because I'm not liking that. We're going to hit again, punch through there a little bit. Now we're going to go ahead and punch into them. Uh, they, you know what, we're going to go ahead and leap on him right there, but we're not going to be able to follow it up. We are, however, going to kill her real quick. Okay, we're going to root him because I'm tired of his flames. Alright, well, let's see here. We're probably going to have to go back. We cannot step to him any longer. And we're going to go ahead and get a little bit more of our Jotun's Wrath going on here. Heading back into base. <laughs> a tower killed the dude. Okay, here's this Changa. Changa's under our tower, so we're going to go ahead and root her in place, land a punch on her, and go ahead and get that kill. Okay, now... Uh, she used her ult just to get the hell out of that. We're going to go ahead and root her in place. We're going to land a punch. We're going to get that kill too. We're going to try and stay as front of him as much as we can. We're going to land that kick just to make sure that we get that kill. All right, now I have enough for our Jotun's Wrath. So we're going to go ahead and head back. Let's go ahead and finish this off. Finish our Yotun's Wrath. And we do have enough to go ahead and start our Frostbound Hammer, which is going to be our next big piece. Let's see what else we can do here. Our Hebo is in trouble. We're probably not going to be able to get to him in time. Okay, here's a Changa that we are going to root in place and we're going to punch. We're going to get that kill relatively easy. Oh, Hercules pulls us in. He doesn't follow it up successfully, though. We're going to go ahead and land a couple quick punches on him. We're going to root him in place. We're going to do as much damage as we can. And we're going to go ahead and get that. Now, kick so that tower shot deals no damage. And we are going to get the hell out of here. Now, there's a Chiron that's looking pretty tasty. Can we hit him? No. Probably should have left on him, but we didn't. And we're going to land that punch just to get that kill real quick. Throw a kick. We're going to go ahead and head back. Okay, we might, we don't have quite enough to finish off a of Frostbound Hammer. Tell you what, we're just going to wait on that. We're, we're only 50 gold out. Let's go ahead and wait on that Frostbound Hammer. And now our auto attacks are going to slow all enemies we hit, which is going to be really, really important. As I was showing, you want to kind of try, if you can, to stay in front of your enemies as much as you can. And this Frostbound Hammer is definitely going to help you do that. All right, so they're all here. Let's go ahead and land a punch just to deal a little bit of damage real quick. We're going to throw a line through them just so we can uh, kind of bully them out of place. Throw another punch just to kill all those all those uh, minions. We've got a Bastet going over here. Ares throwing up a chain. We're going to leap in. We're going to root them in place. We're going to deal some damage. We're going to take a bunch of damage, but that's okay. We're going to use our auto attacks to slow them down to a crawl. We're going to throw another punch. Uh, Chiron is trying desperately, but he's going to get rooted and he's going to get punched out. He was trying desperately to escape, but he wasn't quite good enough. Changa over here. Changa is going to get rooted, and it's just going to kill her. That's fair. Punch just to get those out of the way. All right, now we're going to go ahead and take this camp. So this is how you're going to take camps. First thing you're going to do, throw in a punch, you get all three, throw in your roots so you can heal a little bit, and then you're going to finish it off just like that. It's really easy to do. You can totally use him as a jungler in that way. He is not the easiest jungler, though. His damage isn't incredible, 
so it can be difficult to jungle with him, but you totally can. We're going to freeze him there so uh, Ymir gets the maximum value of his ult, and he totally doesn't let it go in time. We're going to kick that just so we don't take the damage from the kick from the tower. We're going to go ahead and root him in place. We're going to land a punch, and we are out of mana again. So we are going to have to go back again. We are Man, we are just blowing through mana so fast. Okay, we're going to go ahead and pick up. See, here's the thing. I said you're going to go a Kyvel and then Ken Size. What I didn't mention is that once you get Ken Size, you will eventually replace that a Kyvel with Executioner. We already have the money for Executioner. We're going to go ahead and get it. The reason we get a Kyvel is because it's way cheaper. And it's, it's not quite as good as Executioner, but it is a lot cheaper. But since we can go ahead and afford it, we're going to go ahead and get Executioner just to maximize our attack speed and our physical power. And now our auto attacks are also going to uh, basically add penetration value to all of our hits. And all the hits of our allies. So let's go ahead and uh, just weigh on this tower a little bit. Ally has been slain. All right, here, so check this. Very similar to how we do tier. We can use this to leap the hell over, root Kylon in place, land the punch, get that kill. And we are going to try and punch him out. We're going to use that just so we can try and avoid... Oh, no, I'm retarded. Oh, I threw my punch in the wrong direction. That was totally my fault. We're going to throw our three out just so we can get a quick heal. And Ymir is going to just take a crap ton of damage. So very similar to how we use Tear, we're going to use our ult to just leap over those kind of lanes like that. Uh, <laughs> I thought I might get out in time. You know what, I'm just going to punch you and I'm going to slap you in the face. And she should have thrown her ult right there, but she didn't. And right, we are going to leap out of that. We're just going to leap away from her because she can, she could totally destroy us if she wanted to. So we're going to use our ult again just to get the hell out of there. And we're going to go ahead and uh, get the first two pieces of our kin size. And we're also going to go ahead and pick up our second relic, which is going to be, which is going to be meditation because we are juicing on mana just way, way too fast. So we're gonna we're not gonna root that bass yet, but we are gonna kick to get ahead. We're gonna land a punch, and we're going to just punch the living crap out of the Hercules because he can't really do anything to stop us. We're gonna land that. We're gonna root this Changa in place. Uh, she would normally be using her two, but uh, it looks like she just used it, so she wasn't able to get it. Now we're gonna move her here. We're gonna use our medit. Oh crap! Wrong button. Well, now we're gonna use our meditation. Uh, we have lost our phoenix because our bots are just that damn stupid. We're going to root the skyline in place. We're going to deal some massive damage. He's not going to be able to deal enough damage in time. Land a punch. Finish those guys off. We're also going to slow him down to a crawl with our auto attacks. We're going to land that. We're going to throw a line through here to heal up. Throw another punch. I uh, apologize if my uh, dialogue is pretty rapid fire at this point. But uh, it's just kind of how it is. Like, this guy this is a very fast-paced god. So we are going to try and push up this lane as much as we can. And I believe we're probably going to be able to do it. I bet we can take this with two of them down. Throw a line through. Land a punch. Do as much damage as we can. Throw another punch. And we are going to try and beat on this Phoenix as much as we can. And jump so he doesn't pull. And move back. Get the tower off of us. We're going to try and get this tower. He might die in the process. We're going to root him in place. We're going to land a punch. And we're going to slow him to a crawl because he can't do anything about it. We're going to go back to base because our Phoenix is uh, about to be under assault. We're going to go ahead and finish off our keen size, and now we can really start to deal some damage to tankier targets, such as Ares and this Hercules right here. This Changa is running. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw through a line. We're going to root her. We're going to land a punch. 
and we're going to easily get that kill because she just does not have the health to deal with our massive, massive damage. All right, now we're also going to throw a line through here. We're going to throw a punch, clear out this first wave, wait for our wave to get here. And we're going to take out this uh, Phoenix right here. And now we are in line to take the Titan. Let's root her in place, land a punch real quick. Oh, and she would have left away, but Hebo had it on there, had the lift off. We're going to go ahead and use our meditation to give Hebo some of his mana back. Here's a Hercules. We're going to root him in place. We are going to leap out because we do not want the, the uh, Titan to target us. We do not have the health for that. We're going to head back in. We're going to deal some damage. We're going to easily get that kill. And we're going to finish off that Titan just like that. So that is how we are going to play Rabana right there. You know, this is pretty, pretty fast paced. Uh, you're going to use your two to get out, to get in and out of towers, to avoid those CCs and stuns, and to really lay as much of a smack down as you can, as fast as you can, using your one to deal damage, using your three to root, and then following up again with your one. Or just lead with a three, and then follow up with your one. Use your auto attacks to slow your enemies, and once you get Ken size, you're going to be chewing through even the tankiest targets with relative ease, especially since they're going to be so slowed from Frostbound Hammer. So that is how we are going to play Ravana, just like that. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you have a god that you'd like me to, to do a redneck god for, be sure and let me know. All right, y'all have a good one now, you here?